So we'll uh, give give people a few more minutes to file in. Blythe isn't going to make it, but I didn't get any um, other definite no's for tonight. Thanks, Mike. All right, good evening, everybody. All right, the time is 7.03 p.m. and I am calling this December 18th regular meeting of the Kent Park and Rec Commission to order. Uh, roll call of members, we have myself, Naomi, Abigail, John Grant, and Lynn. Um, Rufus is not here to be elevated, uh, so we can get started. Uh, I do have a couple changes to the agenda. Second. Okay. So under Item 10, I'd like to add 10B, after school program, 10C, youth basketball, 10D, open skate and learn to skate, and then I'd like to add an item 13, uh, fiscal year 25 budget worksheet. Could I have a motion to approve the amendment? Yep. Go ahead. I'd like to I'd like to add a couple things. Please, yeah, um, please. Um, the selectmen talked about the capital plan at their uh, December eleventh meeting, and I'd like okay. to, so I'd like to have capital plan added. That could be fourteen. Yep. Um, and I also think that we should just make sure that um, we talk about or we talk about so we can make sure it gets done is the election of the members at the annual town meeting 
Um, Park and Rec, you guys all know this because uh, many of you have been on for a while, but um, Park and Rec is, is actually elected at that meeting in January. So we need to make sure that we get that done because I know from talking to Joyce in the past that that was many times handled by the director. So one of us is going to have to make sure that gets done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So you know the the fifteen. Um, sure. How do you, how do you want me to title that item? Um. Just say election of members at annual town meeting. Okay. Okay. Very good. So again, we have. Um, a 10B after school program, 10C youth basketball, 10D open skate and learn to skate, 13 fiscal year 2025 budget worksheet, 14 capital plan, 15 election of members at annual meeting. Can I have a motion to um, accept the agenda, agenda as amended? So moved. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Thanks, Naomi. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So moving on, um, approval of minutes. So I did add minutes to the shared drive for um, four of our last five meetings. Um, I didn't put them in until 4 p.m. today. So uh, it's probably not likely that anyone has had a chance to review them. Um, and Jared owes me the eighth. Um, Jerry, just you're still planning on getting those to me. Is that is that fair? Yeah, you should have them tonight. Okay. So if um th so those will all be I'll put them in this folder, and um, you know I I did send mine into uh, the town clerk to post them, but um, if we could review them, and then I'm I'm unfortunately we're likely to have a special meeting. Uh, probably in early January, so we can um, approve those minutes then, if, uh, if that makes sense to everybody. But I uh, I don't think... Okay, Michael. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Okay. I was going to say that makes sense to postpone okay. the approval of the minutes. Yeah, I just wanted to give people a chance to review. It wasn't fair just for me to ram them in there, but uh, awesome. Thank you. Okay, where'd my agenda go? Okay, finance reports. Um, I uploaded the to date finance reports. Um, I put them in last Friday, I believe. So um, if anybody has any any questions um, regarding those, now would be the, the time or any comments about to date financials. I have a question on terminology. What does park and rec enrichment mean? Is that is that the after school program? That is the uh the after school program, Jared. Okay. That um yeah, you it's the after that, school yeah. program. Okay. okay, thanks. All right. Was, well, there's, oh, ahead, the final, I'm sorry. What about what was the final cost on the playground equipment, the new playground equipment? Um, that's under that capital so yeah that it might not be in the, here it's not okay. going to be in these uh these right, income good. statements john but um i can uh i can ask barbara for that that total and and get that into one of the next meetings it was a hundred thousand okay. dollars say again it's a hundred thousand even yeah including the, what, what is that new piece of equipment that came in that's the the picnic bent, picnic table that was a part of the original project, but was back ordered. So that's all still included in the original price. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Jared. Um, okay. So continuing on. Correspondence. Um, the only course. So I got correspondence related to some of the the later items. I I had a correspondence related to basketball. Um I guess I could I didn't put a basketball uh item in the revised agenda, did I? So let me you added I guess I did. Yeah, basketball. youth basketball. Okay. Yeah. So I want I'll talk about 
youth basketball, I'll talk about um, one of the coaches, uh, Lara, reaching out about some uh, some details. And then um, I had another email from Marty regarding day-to-day um, -day P and R operations. So we can talk about that at nine, but uh, otherwise I, I didn't have any, uh, any correspondence, Jared, anything that uh, you had that I didn't bring up? I don't think so. Um, okay, so moving on to seven public Sorry, comment. Um, oh, go ahead. Let me just double check. Sure. I don't think there was, but uh, um, did you see that uh, the um, I had forwarded you on the eleventh an application. Um, an application. Let me see. I'm just the... gonna. Is it for the director position? Um, yes, I do see that, and I believe. Okay, I just sent it again. This is in our but... yeah. So this was a um a application for the director position. Let me just double check that we have that in our uh, um chair folder for the subcommittee. One second. Yes, we do. Okay. So we have that. Um, yep. So that came in through, I think, a second venue too. So yep, that's uh, that has been collected. Okay. Yeah, that was all I had then. Okay. Cool. All right. Public comments. Um, we have uh, a member of the public in the meeting. Uh, any comment from the public? Okay, keep moving. Um, number eight, alternate candidate Karen Iannucci. Uh, so we have an open alternate position. And I got an email from Karen Iannucci that I'll read. Um, she wrote on Thursday, November 30th. Mike, my name is Karen Iannucci. I live in Kent and I'm interested in the position of alternate on the Park and Rec Board. I'm a retired special education teacher for Region 1 with over 30 years of experience working at HVRHS, Sharon, and Kent. I'm now a special education consultant for Region 1. I've been involved in coaching basketball and baseball, being very active when my children were playing. I was involved on Special Olympics, Cub Scout leader, camp leader, and pre-K parent groups. I'm also involved in the Senior Center, working with people coming up with activities. I want to continue to help Kent grow on activities for seniors, teens, adults, and kids, as well as working closely with the board. I hope you can share me for this position. And she left her uh, phone number for contact. Um, so I, I was really pumped to get uh, to get the email from Karen. Um, I don't know if anyone on this, I haven't met her personally, but I, I don't know if anyone else um, knows Karen at all or has any uh, has any thoughts or if um, they want to discuss. I know her. Um... She's uh, very energetic and she's a real, from my uh, interactions with her, she's somebody who actually likes to get it, her hands into things and do things, which I think is a good, good type of person to have on Park and Rec. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, yeah, it takes, takes all types. Definitely, um, you know, people that, that want to be present, you know, either running programs or, or keeping up with maintenance, that sort of thing. Um, that's great. Uh, so, you know, I, I will make a motion um, to accept Karen Iannucci for uh, the open alternate position uh, that expires January, 2024. Second. Okay, any, uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Just to, Aye. Just to clarify. Yep. Our position ends at the next meeting. Yeah, it's uh, okay. 
It ends it, at it, the it, annual town meeting. Yeah. That's, so that's we, why we, we have, have to. Right. So Naomi, Abigail, your your term, Rufus as the new alternate, and now um, Karen <laughs> will all uh, will have to, you know, renew you guys next next month if you okay. are so willing. Um, okay, great. So I will email Karen and we are back to a full house, which is pretty sweet. Uh, minus a director, of course, but that we are working on. Okay, um, nine, day-to-day PNR operations management. Um, Marty reached out to me basically to check in on how Jared would be handling his um his part-time work you know in in this last month and also to see you know how we as a commission plan to man the office so to speak so jared isn't able to be you know wh what we're getting from jared now is is essentially um a bonus in the sense that you know he he could have just taken pay out of vacation days but he he set it up where you know he he was taking partial vacation during weeks but also working as well um so that that's been a big help uh he's, he's been doing a lot but he hasn't been physically at town hall um so i guess the downside of that is that uh you know the office had some packages that uh nobody was able to you know put away for a week or whatnot um you know things like that so so marty reached out to kind of get clarification on that um we're not going to get jared in the office you know at any regular point um so i guess i don't know if anyone has thoughts on you know how we should cover the office physically uh while we search for a new director i guess my question is what is the value of having a body in the office? And like what what are what's what's the what's the hope? Because when we've had a gap in the past, we never had anybody sitting in the office. I think maybe it was checked in, someone checked checked in on it occasionally. But I don't know if we like so I guess I'm just trying to understand like what are we trying to achieve by having somebody there? And then maybe we can talk about how we would get there. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, how I, um, so I, I definitely know more, like one of Marty's goals is to find more space for um, our storage. Um, you know, like w when we had to move out of, uh, the closet we had in um i'm blanking on the name of that building but um you know kind of jared, jared did, yeah exactly so jared did his best to um you know find space for everything but when and jared you know if, if uh if you think i'm saying anything that's incorrect correct me but uh you know like if, if he has to be regularly using stuff um you know it was, it was easier to kind of keep stuff at the ready in the office um and and maybe that's more clutter than some people are comfortable with. But uh, I know Marty is talking to Kent Center School about repurposing um, a room there for for park and rec items. I haven't gotten like an update on, on how that's going. Um, but to answer your question, Abigail, I guess the goal would be to like, it sounds like just be there enough to um, to take care of any packages and and maybe, um, you know, collect the mail, that sort of thing, you know, like, does that make sense? Like kind of keep up appearances a lot, in a lot of ways. So be there enough. We don't have a director. So the ask mm -hmm. is perhaps to keep up appearances. That's, that's what well, the that request would be of the commission. Well, that, that wasn't uh, specific. That or was wasn't, that implied? <laughs> it was kind of implied. Just so he kind. said, he just said, uh, I have concerns about PR office in town not being open during any business hours. And also there have been many deliveries of various materials to the office that now sit inside the door. 
Um, I would hope to see some support and ideas from the commission on how to manage day-to-day -day operations of the PNR program in the director's absence. So those well, those are the specific words from from Marty. I guess like, the question you, but, is, can I'm sorry, John, didn't mean to cut you off. Um, but the question seems to be, are are do Park and Rec commission members have some flexibility? to be able to give an hour a week or something like that? I mean, some minimal amount. Just okay. trying to understand what it is so we can maybe come up with something. As if, it, if it's to keep up appearances, to tidy the space, oh, to put boxes away, yeah. well, and to collect mail, it sounds like someone needs to check in once a week for a half hour, if that's, if that's what we're trying to achieve. Would, does that sound reasonable? And so question, um, can we have somebody um, there working as an interim or do we, how does that work? We did have an interim director after Leslie left. Mm -hmm. And I think we gained a lot from, from that because I can't remember, I think we, we, I can't remember actually how we got to that decision, but um, it bought us a lot of time. It, so the, other, have an the other alternative might be, um, could we hire one of the program aides to help us with some stuff just to give like half an hour, an hour of time? You know, could they do uh, some stuff? We do have one program aide and Jared, I know that we, strategically wrote one of the job descriptions to en enable as much flexibility to what that individual was doing as possible so that they could just be like an extra pair of hands for you. So perhaps that role could do what Lynn is describing. Yeah, I, I definitely think you have, um, you have some people who could help out. Um, I mean, unfortunately, the most of the most of the people in those roles are, um, I don't know, available. I, it really all depends on what you guys are looking at. I don't know what they'd be available for. Um, if you're talking about like during the day, man, the office type of thing, um, probably gonna be hard pressed to get anybody who could do that. Um, if you're talking about the evenings and whatnot and helping out with the programs, probably a little bit easier. But um, it really all depends, I, I guess, like you said, you know, previously, Abigail, understanding exactly what it is that you want to do um, and then seeing who could best fit that role, um, if anyone. But I mean, half the kids are high schoolers, so that, you know, really limits their availability and and uh, ability. But um, then the others um i'm not so sure you're going to get them for a few hours a week just to come up to look over the office i mean you got to make it worth their while so sure. um i really think knowing what you want to do is is probably um you know the first half of that equation and you know, perhaps we could build you know we could offer one of the asp aids um, to extend their hours once a week to go by the office? Just a thought. Well, you're not going to probably, I doubt Rebecca, you could ask her, but she teaches all day and then does ASP. So it's unlikely she's going to want to add on. Um, Shannon might be an option, but, uh, you know, um, she doesn't she's not at asp she's like per diem with asp but she would definitely be an option um i'd think and she does come from a little bit further so she'd probably jump at that the opportunity to take on more hours make her commute worth it so that's definitely a possibility could you develop a list jared of the program aids um contact information and you know, you're feeling like, I mean, I don't, I'm in the dark, so I don't even know how far people are driving. So um, it would be yeah, helpful to have that kind of a list. So it's, it's a hodgepodge. Um, 
bunch, like I said, a few of them are in high school, so they're out. They don't work the weekdays. Um, one also uh, took a job elsewhere, or two of them actually took jobs elsewhere, so they're no longer in the mix, so far as I know. Um, mm-hmm. So really only like one or two people who'd be viable options, um, but I could definitely send over their info so you guys could work on that. Cool. The yeah. other the other question that a couple of people have posed to me is um, how are we going to keep the programs going? Um, I think the you know, getting Lee Pete to do the bunk, uh, the, I've forgotten the name now. Is it Bunko? Bunko. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, somebody else was asking about uh, bingo, you know, so um, do we, do the commission members need to take any kind of responsibility of making sure and then the other the other question is classes that are going to start in January um I know Mark the yoga teacher was wondering she hadn't heard much and the water aerobics people were wondering too about whether or not I don't know how the yoga teacher could say she hasn't heard much we we text message back and forth almost every day so I could show you our email thread so I honestly don't know how Dawn could say that but um, I don't okay. know. Yeah, no, she's been, so, in the, she's, I, I think maybe, by her nature, she's yeah. a more anxious person, but I've been keeping her in the loop on everything. So, but maybe Man. they just want assurances that, that yes, the programs are going to continue. We've got yeah, a plan, already, that kind of thing. I already this set her up with dates, why, the house, everything. So this is probably why, this is probably why we brought in an interim director because the commission doesn't have the capacity to continue running the programs without a director. I think we really hit a hard spot with ASP. And just that, you know, we did have a um, a bunch of, you know, different people were reading emails in the absence of the director. But now that we're going through, we're ha- you're, you're asking these questions, I think that's how we ended up making the decision to go interim director because we couldn't keep it up as a commission and most of the people who were on the commission were here at that time too well i think we need to have a we need to have we need to have a discussion about availability because going through and you know hiring an interim director that's a whole other layer of you know advertising um interviewing and all that and our our, we've been through it (laughs) I, i know And And I will just say, at that time, we didn't, the group didn't have the availability. So I'm just like, assuming those who didn't have availability then probably don't have it now, but maybe the schedules have changed. So my question is, because I'm hearing lots of questions and I'm not hearing any solution. My thing is, is it possible that we can reach out to the last interim director and ask, you know, if they're available to fill in um, this because you know like I've said in the beginning it will really be good if we can have an interim director somebody to shadow Jared before he leaves and we know what's happening somebody in the office holding you know like um, like was mentioned before with Mike you know holding the space to say hey this is what's done you know if we have Jared leave and we have nobody there knowing what's going on you know um, shadowing Jared you know it's like I don't know I it's going to be not only a big position to fill, it's going to be a big void. And we're going to be, you know, what are we going to be doing? September still trying to play catch up. Well, if I may not to complicate matters. Um, so according to the notice that I gave you guys, this was my last week and I was using all of my vacation time next week. Um, so with respect to shadowing me, um, if that's going to be the case, or if you guys want me, you know, further involved, um, we'll have to talk about that as well, because my tenure as a full-time employee is basically over. Um, I have no problem extending it, but, you know, Mike and I had a conversation the other day, basically it would have to be like a no stress, you know, you guys like have to be understanding of my schedule, et cetera. I don't want to create any issues for Mike or myself. So um, just to Naomi, like I have no problem doing everything you're saying, but I just want to make sure that, um, you know, that it works for me as well. So, understood. Thank you for that, Jared. Of course. Can uh, can we reach out to uh, Rufus? Rufus was involved in a lot of uh, earlier 
uh, programs. So, can can we just go around and talk about whether or not individuals who are on this call have any availability to help or interest in helping? Well, Lynn, I can I can do uh, if you can transfer the phone over to here. I can take care of the phone calls. But as far as I have a limited ability with my legs, so. Okay. That was going to be one of my questions: is who who would be answering the phone? So, okay. and and the emails. Mike, do you have access to the email account? Or uh, not as of right now, but I um, I definitely can get get access. I mean, well, I the personally last time we did this. We had a, I think it was life. I can't remember. There was a couple of commissioners who checked email. Um. I don't know if we had anybody answering the phone. I think we had checking messages, but nobody was, no one had the phone forwarded to their line, but it was more, they checked messages. Um, Abigail, yeah, but I know we had a couple of people checking email. Abigail, we had a lot less going on. You know, if you, you remember. Know, Kate, that's a great point. <laughs> now, didn't have a lot going on so it just it's just that we're in a totally different a different situation now yeah and so i was i know that there is there a document that's been created, that's been created between, between um yeah. by jared sorry i have a terrible echo um of all of the details on all the programming that are coming up and contacts i think we have that right i have not seen that I have not seen that. No, I don't have I any put have together that. like that yet. I mean, it's it's not overly difficult. Wow. Most of that stuff yeah. is at the ready in one form or another. So it's just a matter of aggregating it. So we definitely need that. Um, we, you know, we definitely need to either have a special meeting. I don't think we want to have it all recorded in Zoom, to be honest. But I think somebody should has to sit down and go through this, the calendar for the next six months, all the work, you know, review all of the work Jared has done to develop these programs. Who are the contacts? Who are the lifeguards? You know, who are the uh, club getaway counselors? Um, I, I, I was under the impression that that was part of the exiting, um, what we were trying to do during this time of exit. I was under and, the impression that Kate, you got cut off. I'm sorry. No, I was under the same. I was under the same impression, and I think Jared, we, we're we're up against it. This doesn't help that it's the holiday season, and uh, if there's something you could put together like that, we clearly, we clear. If we're gonna be, if we're gonna be, um, somehow bridging this time between now and the new director, we need some kind of a document that has this information. What we're going to be, you know. I agree, um, Jared. I'm happy to meet with you sometime this week if you wanted to dictate, and I could take things down. Um, happy to give you a hand with that. Yeah, no. There's. It's honestly, like I said, it's all basically at the ready. I just haven't aggregated it, so I I wouldn't need to meet with you. That's not a not a problem at all. And it would be awesome if uh, Jared, the, the whole commission could review it just so we can ask you questions if we see gaps before yeah. you sign off for the holidays. And also for email access for um for the um for the department, I'm thinking your email will probably have an um you know like an access code to it. Um, is that is that going to be open that the commission can access, Jared, or would you have to um, put that information down somewhere for some, you know, for us to be able to um, pass that on? I don't have the authority to give every anyone on the commission email access, so you guys would have to discuss that with Marty or with uh, Joyce. But um, you know, that is easy enough. It's just, I mean, Lynn had email access till the day I had email access, so I don't see that being too much of an issue. They use 
Google, the town uses Google um, email, so it's not that hard. <laughs> so I should uh, email Joyce, Jared? Yeah, she can okay. make that happen. All right, I will do that. I would, I would just make sure that um, we are like, um, I'm assuming we could both have access to it. I don't see why that would be a problem. But just make sure she doesn't remove me from having access. Otherwise, I won't be able to complete uh, some objectives, you know, by the end of this week or next week. Uh, Lynn, Lynn Flynn put something there in the meeting chat. You want to look at it real quick? So, Jared, um, do we need to have volunteers that want to help um, go through the background check process like you you recommended with Lee Pete? Yeah, yeah, that's generally what I do. Okay. Sounds worse than it is. It's just basically a piece of paper filling it out. <laughs> Not even. It's all digital. Yeah. You got a link. It takes two minutes. It's easy. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Lynn uh, Flynn, for being willing to help out. So that's that brings up something. It's like maybe one of us could be a volunteer coordinator and just make sure that if something needs a volunteer, we have a list of people that are interested in helping. Um, I know Ruth Woodard is interested in helping with bingo. So. Um, Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, because I guess like in the, I mean, we're, I was going to discuss some of this down the line on this agenda, but I mean, might as well start talking about. You know, we have youth basketball coming up, right? And uh, ski and snowboard club. I'm just looking at you know the calendar. Um, Swim. I don't believe anybody from Park and Rec needs to be present for uh, for the ski program. Okay. Which is amazing. And from what I recall Jared saying, with the swim program, at least the learn to swim, that's all organized and ready. So I, I don't know. Jared, what do you think the degree of commissioner presence needs to be for that program? Um, I don't necessarily think there needs to be a commissioner presence at that program if it's staffed accordingly and everything else. You have Mo and, and you know, one other person there to check people in and whatnot. Jalen did that, uh, I think, most of the season. So I don't necessarily think there would need to be commissioner presence because you have a, a leader, a lifeguard, and a staff member already there. And I recall for basketball, when we were in between directors, Michelle Mott preferred that a commissioner was present for the program, uh, particularly to monitor the door. Okay. Um, so right, I'm seeing... Trying to think like what days do we have? Oh, so we have Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays. So that's three days a week, 5 30 and 6 30. That's the youth basketball. That's I can do it the days that my kids are doing it. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, but I'm not totally sure which days my kids are actually doing it. And I can't do it on Mondays. I coach basketball at a different school during those days and times, so I would not be able to make it over there in time. And um, I don't have the schedule in front of me. When is this basketball going to start? That's in January, right? Yeah, so I'm just uh I'm just going off of the Myrac and um shows 
the ninth and eighth of January for the kindergarten and first and second and third. So the um the first so the second week of January. Okay. Yeah, I'm coaching also, so I wouldn't be available. And also, and it's, um, sorry, Jared, uh, just to be clear, because I remembered for ski last year, um, the first day handover, you know, basically I'm calling it handover. Um, we had you there. You don't need to be there for um, at least the first day. Well, no, you're not going to be there anyway. That's in January. For the first I wasn't day there at all last year for ski. I didn't go to a oh. single day. Oh, I, to me, I remember you being there the first day. Okay, so that's already settled. Everybody just needs to show up there for skiing. Right? Yeah, but it's not a drop-off program. So everyone will be getting an email saying, like, you cannot, parents have to stay on the premises. Okay. So, okay. Because we don't have a staff member there. So I already talked to them about that. They understood the situation. And they just said that if you know, we can't provide a staff member, then all parents need to know that they're responsible for their child, the whole process, soup to nuts. Okay, okay. No. So right now we're just um it looks like for the days Abigail's children aren't in basketball for either that uh or, or two of those days. Um doesn't look like we could have anybody from the commission there. So it's whether they're comfortable as with our coaching well, staff being the. So I think, Mike, we shouldn't quite draw the conclusion that we can't have the commission just because we don't have the full group here. And mm -hmm. hopefully someone who's not present might be able to. Okay. Um, but yeah, I do remember it was, it was pretty explicit that um, a commissioner needed to be there for the program at KCS. Well, could it be, does it have to be a commissioner or could it be a volunteer that's representing no, the commission? No, it was a commissioner. I remember, I, well, I, but maybe at she the time, feel it differently was a commissioner. Now. Yeah, I think we can probably have a volunteer. That, you know, the, um, I think the school, the, the, you know, maybe I'm just assuming the problem is that we can't have the school, you know, staff doing it because, you know, their job is over. So if we're doing the program, then we should be responsible to answer the door and probably um it, it's a situation like that so you know maybe we could reach out to michelle and let her know you know hey we've got we're just going to have a volunteer and not an actual commissioner doing it I don't i'll think follow up with her since i was the one that communicated with her the last time and just let her know you know the position we're in and see if she has flexibility and and mention and that and mention that we are you know, sort of instituting a policy that volunteers who are representing the commission have to go through a background check because that might help her feel better about it. Okay, I will. Yeah. So can I just ask real quick, just so I can know from a personal standpoint, are, do you, are you guys going to want anything from me after this or is this the end for me? Because I've said a few times, like I'd stay on part-time, but it never well, I, really gets acknowledged. Sure. So if you don't want it, it's totally cool. I just need to I know think, for sure. Um, Bob, well, I think that we that have to make a decision on if if we're going to bring somebody in as an interim director. I think it would be of great benefit for that person to talk to you, so they could ask, you know, have questions answered directly from you. And I think the document, you know, that we're asking for, I think that that's going to be a little bit of a back and forth to make sure that it's, you know, something that we can all use. So definitely we're gonna need some more time to do that. And we we may need more time if we decide to go with an interim director, but I can't imagine this group's gonna be making that decision this evening. Jared, are you flexible enough that you could give a few hours like every week for two months? Yeah, I said that initially, I said that absolutely. But I don't want it, like Abigail just said, and I understand where you're coming from, like, oh, we'll let you know type of thing. That's not really fair to me. You know, I'm trying to get my life in order with a new job, not like I'm doing, yeah. like I said, I'm doing this as a favor because I don't want to see, not a favor, I'd be getting paid, of course, but I don't want to see things fall apart. 
but I also, you know, I, I do want to be able to plan things accordingly. Um, you know, so if you said, Lynn, you know, Hey, can you help out for, you know, five to 10 hours every week? No problem. But once again, so long as it wasn't drama, if there's going to be drama about me working remotely or doing stuff, scheduling people remotely and all that stuff, then of course, I think we'd have to, um, you know, factor that in. But if, if you guys are okay with it, I could definitely make it work. You know, like I said, I've said it a few times, but I also don't want to be pushy. If you guys don't want it, just tell me it's not going to hurt my feelings. So, um, but just let me know. I think we didn't I don't understand. Think I, feel like hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I think we definitely need you. Sorry, Lynn. Yeah, no, I, I don't think we understood what you were offering. I know I didn't. Well, no, Lynn, this was <clears> before <throat> you were a part of it. You weren't even mm -hmm. here yet. Um, you know, so it's, it's up to you guys. You just, just let so, me know. I'd like to make a motion to um, hire, uh, keep Jared on in a part-time status, five hours a week, um, remote for uh, logistic coordination, question answering, um, but not no expe expectation to be in the office. Second. Okay, so let's have some discussion then. Um, so yeah, I, I think uh, I, I'm definitely in favor of that. Um, I think it's it's important that we're explicit about it being um, remote. And then as far as the, uh, I, I mean, I, I guess it would be like a prorated, prorated uh, version of his current. Well, how much do you want to get paid? How much is the hourly rate, Jared? Um, I wouldn't get paid any less than you guys currently pay me. I mean, I'm not going to tell you you have to pay me what my new job pays me, but I can't take any less than I currently make. So, so we'll I guess just say Jared, the same salary. Jared, I guess the question, because you, you know, it's going to be remote, and obviously, you know, we need you, and um, you know, you, you're mentioning that you have the flexibility. So my question would be, how many hours do you think you have that you can offer us? Because you know, for us to say we need you ten hours, and then you only have two hours or six hours, you know, and to avoid for me to back and forth. Um, well, I think, you know, not to interrupt, but, you know, you just pay me hourly and, um, you know, I wouldn't set maybe a, a max or a minimum on it. Um, just, you know, the amount of hours it takes to get the job done, which would be to do the work, do payroll, schedule people, coordinate with people. Um, you know, the stuff that I've been doing over the past two weeks and there really haven't been any issues. As I was talking to Mike the other day, you know, all the programs went off without a plan. We had one week where every single program was using the community house and I coordinated with Joyce. Everybody was able to trade keys. All the programs went off. Everything was good. Everyone's been getting paid. The invoices have been getting processed the whole nine. So, um, you know, it enough to keep things afloat, not enough to add on new programs and go crazy with everything. But I, I certainly, you know, think, um, you know, if you just set it in such a way that it's enough to to um do basic department functions and then ideally until someone is hired which hopefully would be less than two months um but even if it were two months it would be okay um you know i think that'd be fine okay so uh lynn this would be something that we would have to go to the board of selectmen for approval um probably um okay just because we'd be essentially like kind of like rehiring them. Yeah. Um, if my if I did the calculations correct and somebody else should definitely check me, but I think I'd come up with thirty dollars and sixty cents an hour. I haven't done the calculations, but that sounds like it's on par with what I would have imagined. Okay. I think this is a good solution for getting us through this interim period i really do and the the thought of having to try and hire an interim director on top of hiring the permanent director just that terrifies me because it would be like so much more work so i think this would be huge and, and i thank you very much jared for making this offer yeah of course no problem like i said i don't the last thing i want to see is anything fall by the wayside um you know and uh, I think we can definitely make this work um, if that's what you guys want, of course. 
Yes, I think for in, you know, in the name of smooth transition, um, we definitely need to have Jared on a little longer until we find some some form of replacement. And um, like mentioned, having somebody else, it's just too much changing. With, and, you know, it takes 50 meetings to get one thing done to avoid all of that and things just fall by the wayside. And then we're trying to get all of this together. Um, again, I think it would be too hard. So I, you know, if we can, I'm all for keeping Jared on board until, you know, in the interim, until we find or we figure out what it is we're doing. And I think in this paradigm of Jared staying, I think it would be great to have him continue to monitor emails, but perhaps having a commissioner, you know, maybe Mike as the chair also just um, for the handoff after the fact. And I would also propose, I don't know, I think I've, what I've heard in this discussion is, are we putting a cap on the hours weekly? Or are we just saying, you know, to, you know, um, the day-to-day -day running and coordinate, uh, coordination and leaving it at that and however many hours that takes is, is what it is. We could do, we could, we could propose a certain amount and then say not to exceed or something like that. Um, you know. Would that not complicate um, things? We're I just to don't think we, we just thought we don't have to keep going back to the board of selectmen. If we just say we need them for five hours a week, not to exceed 10 or something like that. Um, you know. Input that sounds reasonable. Maybe not to. Yeah, I think that sounds reasonable. Jared, what Jared? What's your thoughts on this? Um, I, my thought is it's it's totally up to you guys. I don't see a reason to put a cap on it. Um, I mean, this is already budgeted for, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm an honest guy. I'm not going to lie about hours or anything. If it took me more than X, that's because it actually needed to take more than that. But it's totally up to you guys. You know, I'll work within whatever parameters you set. You know, but um, I don't. I don't I was just, I was know just, if. I was just... What's that, Kate? No, I was just saying we just make it easier for the board of selectmen, and we just—that's all. I well, mean, of course, you're not. If you of want course, to do you're that, not. I would person. say. Of just... course, you're not gonna. Of course, you're not gonna. You know, of course, you're not gonna be honest about it. I don't think that's the question. I think. It's oh just yeah, no, about... no, no. I'm just. I was just saying, like. Um. I just don't want to put a cap on it and then find that for some reason something crazy is going on that week. And if I came up for a full day, that would be eight hours. Boom, right there. Bam, done for the week. So, um, but what I would say is then why don't you just put it at 20, which is a part time, 20 hours is part time, right? So then or I mean, we could we no could just say we could just say we estimate it'll be between five and 10 hours a week. And, yeah. And not. I mean, the the way the the process works is that the you know when somebody's hourly, the treasurer is doing that. Every is it almost every week or is it every two weeks that you guys get paid, Jared? Weekly. It is weekly. So I mean, one of my new tasks is I'm supposed to sign off on this. So, um, on certain months. So, um, I I don't think I'm too worried about it, and I don't think the the slack when are going to be too worried about it. If we just say we estimate it'll be between five and 10 hours a week. I think, I think we can trust Jared to do what needs to be done. Sounds good to me. It yeah, makes all the sense in the world. Is a reasonable amount of time for the ask. Okay. So Abigail, do you want to um, update your motion to include the part about the estimate of five to 10 hours a week and that at a 20, um, 20. Oh. No, I think if we really think it's only going to be about five to 10 hours, let's just say that's what we're estimating. I don't, we're not going to say it's a max, Kate. We're saying it's an estimate. Okay. My, my, my issue is, you know, I understand, um, you know, the estimate of five to 10 hours a week. So if we do five hours, that's like one hour a day. So we're putting a cap. There are times like Jar just mentioned, I know it would take, you know, back and forth with phone calls, checking the emails. There are days you would do more hours than others. So I, I really think we should up that hour. You know, it's a part-time job 
in the handover. And I know with him handing over and having somebody shadow and, you know, obviously um, we're all going to be calling, you know, to find out this. I, I really think we should up those hours, the five to 10 hours. I'm not comfortable with the five to 10 hours. But it's an estimate. It is not, a, I'm not saying we should have it as a maximum. Perhaps I'll just maybe uh, could say we estimate eight hours a week and um, not put a cap. And that's yeah, no, kind of I don't think anyone's saying cap. One day, um, one day just, a week sounds... is the estimate. Okay, so I'm going to modify this. Well, one, uh, one other thing I was, sorry, um, okay, if you just sorry. wanted to put in the, um, at an hourly rate um, equal to his, uh, his director's salary or prorated from his director's salary. Okay, so I'd like to be, I'd like to modify the pre-existing, the motion I have on the table um, to state that to hire Jared, the, the current Park and Rec director, um, at a prorated rate of his salary um, for an estimate of eight hours a week um, to oversee the ongoing coordination and running of the Park and Rec department until we hire a new director. Remotely. Remotely, yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, can I have a second for that? I'll second it. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Well, um, I think that... Um, you know, we, we won't get too relaxed with that, Jerry, but that does put, um, I think, a lot of it is uh, us at ease. And um, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm appreciative of you making yourself available. So I, um, I so also Lynn, just I guess, wanted to thank Lynn for pushing us yeah, on this. Definitely. And uh, so, Lynn, I I should email this to, to Marty. Is that... Um, like the best next step for the yeah we actually you know. have a meeting on the 27th a regular meeting so um i can make sure that if it doesn't get you know i i think you should email him um, okay. and ask them to put it on the agenda and if you can give them the motion that we just made yeah that would be awesome and then i'll just make sure that we deal with it rufus is on now did anybody want to ask rufus if he could uh Donate some time. Hey, we, Rufus, we, we were just talking about, um, you know, coverage once we lose Jared. Um, but uh, we obviously are going to still use him. But uh, I guess when we were asking commissioners, you know, who had availability if if we needed someone to be physically present, let's say at Kent Center School or at the, uh, you know, town hall. Um, is that something you would ever have availability to, to help out with? Um, yeah, my schedule's flexible. Um, I mean, I, I'm have a lot of different things sort of going on. As long as I have lead time, I can, I can pretty much schedule coverage. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah. So right now the only thing we, uh, have identified is for the youth basketball that's starting the second week of January. Um, in the past, Michelle Mott requested that a member from the commission um, uh, be a door monitor, and Abigail can do it for some of the sessions, likely, but uh, can't do it for all of them. She's going to talk to Michelle about, you know, what her expectations are for that. Um, but right now, that's that's the only thing up in the air. And those are um, in the evenings on Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, 5.30 and 6.30. I have very little scheduled in January right now. So that okay. would be. All right. Well, that, that, that 
could be a, a huge help. Um, so we'll just uh, we'll keep an eye on that. It's going to be here before we know it. Um, all right. Well, that was that was a productive uh, agenda item. Um, the other thing that we were talking about before you came yeah. on, Rufus, was that we were talking about there was some concern that there's nobody in the office to deal with things like packages. So I certainly have some flexibility right now. I don't know what my life is going to be like in a few weeks from now, but um, I could certainly make it a point to stop by and and make sure there's no packages at least once a week that are piling up. Um, I could, but that I might be curious. What I kind of packages? Do the same kind of thing. This. I just what, heard. What are in those question. packages? This this whole package thing. I said this to Mike the other day. Is it is totally way overblown. I pre-ordered a bunch of snacks for the after-school program. The boxes weighed about thirty ounces. And they were left on the table in the office. I came in on Thursday night. There was no problem at all. And there were three pieces of mail in my mailbox. So I don't know what this is all stemming from. I I, I don't know. But the packages to me seem to be a non-issue. And I'd been in touch with Joyce and Samantha at Town Hall several times going over programming activities. And no one once ever said, you have boxes piling up. We're concerned. So I really don't understand what the big deal is. And we don't order that much unless it's it's program specific. That was just to get snacks for ASP for Rebecca. So I, I think we're okay just to to put the package thing to rest because um, it it was kind of burning me up a little bit. Okay, but we just want to be we just want to be responsive. But maybe we could just ask Joyce to let us know if there's an issue. <laughs> you know, maybe that's all it takes. You know. Um, the other thing is in our chat, um, Lynn did mention something about um, bingo prizes. So like who, somebody would have to be responsible for purchasing and, and getting the prizes for this kind of a program. So if you could help <laughs> guide us on that, Jared, that would be awesome. <laughs> well, these are things I, I definitely, now that we're starting to formulate an, an actual plan, because before, you know, like, Abigail just said, thank you, Lynn, for pushing this forward. Um, and Naomi said, like, not a whole lot of decision making regarding the future really happened. But now that it's like, OK, I'm going to stay on part time. Well, now I know specific objectives I'm going to have to complete. Um, it's not so theoretical anymore. So, you know, I'm going to be coming up if I'm staying on part time. I'll be coming up at least once or twice a week. And I have no problem coordinating with Lynn. If, you know, Lynn is a volunteer at the community center, I mean, at the senior center. And if Lynn wants to take over kind of running point on bingo with Ruth, you know, Lynn, you and I could go shopping once a month, pick out prizes, you know, um, and I'll, you know, do the payment side of it and you take them and hold on to them. So that's no problem for me to coordinate with the, the people, even with respect to basketball, we're going to have to order shirts. We're going to have to, um, you know, do X, Y, and Z. So coordinating with Rufus and Abigail on that would be something I would certainly head up. And then I know Mike had said something about Lara potentially being involved. Um, so if I'm coming on and staying on part-time and that all gets approved, I would not shirk my responsibilities in coordinating all those things. Thank you for that, Jared. And Jared also, um, you know, I can't tell from now what my flexibility is. So if you need any help for anything, or this, you know, anywhere that I can assist, like feel free to send me an email. You know, I don't mind going over to the um, you know, to the office and check in on things if you need me to. It's just, I can't say I'm going to be there once a week or I can't say where, you know, it's, I'm total last minute, you know, I have time today. I can go yeah, today. No, of course, of course. Yeah. So whatever you need, I'm here to help, you know, I'm here for the kids. I'm here for, you know, us getting through this. I'm here for a smooth transition and making it easy for everybody. So whatever you need, just let me know. All right. Great. Awesome. Awesome. In terms of uh, bingo prizes, I know New Milford um, Senior Center with the bingo there, um, a, a lot of the prizes are donations. Oh. People bring things in. Um, it can be a variety of things. Um, some of the stuff that gets brought in, we throw away. <laughs> but some of it's perfectly good, you know, whether it's uh, jigsaw puzzles or you know, people 
have items that are in relatively good shape. It could be Christmas candles, all kinds, you know, people bring in all kinds of different things that they want to get rid of. And, and it seems to work. It's a great idea. And maybe we can send an email asking, you know, for donations, if anybody wants to donate anything, I don't mind coming and helping sorting through, you know, when they come, you know, and whatever leftover, we can always, you know, donate the donation <laughs> to the thrift store. But, um, that is definitely something I can, you know, jar, like I said, whatever you need. I think also putting something like that out on Facebook, a lot of people would want to help. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. So we have a plan for day-to-day -day park and rec operations management. Moving on, agenda item 10, programs and events. Um, the first a movement class. Uh, so Laura Barrett, um, who we've brought up a few times in the last couple uh, couple meetings, um, she is connected to the Kent School, as we probably all know. And they have a dance studio that is... Um, it's 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 i think it's on main street like she she explained to me where the building was but it's um it's it's not right on their main campus it's i believe it's on main street and they they use it um the the the, the, the town uses used it for fema pickup after one of the hurricanes it's um it's like behind the the shoe store yeah, behind salon. behind the camp town center yeah that's what See, it's called, sorry. It's the old outpost building for those who've been around for several decades. <laughs> got it, got it. And um, so she had an idea that, um, it, you know, it, it could be used for, um, you know, you know, what she termed a movement class for for young kids. And um, she it seemed to, she seemed to believe that, you know, based on her, talks with their parents there there would be interest in it and it would kind of be like you know a, a true intro kind of you know beginner type um program and you know th there are teachers um that work for the kent school that she indicated would have um you know she, she believes would have availability to cover this types of programs um you know, it kind of led into a conversation about, you know, uh, how to structure the class so it wouldn't compete with um, the other dance company in town. And so I talked to Jared about that and, um, you know, we kind of, you know, decided that it'd be important to reach out to, um, wow. sorry, it's called Star. Um, does anyone know the name of the dance studio in town? I think it is Star's Dance Studio. Or something. Star, yeah, think, Star Studio yeah, Dance. So we'd want to we'd want to approach them to kind of explain what we were introducing, just to kind of make sure they didn't see it as a threat to their their business. But it sounded like, as as Lara explained it, and I, I haven't done my own research on it, but they're more of a you know a, a serious competitive kind of approach to to dance, whereas this would be, or to movement, this where this would be more of a, um, you know, a first experience type, type program. Um, so I, uh, I, I told her I would bring it to the commission and I don't know if anyone has any, any thoughts on that type great. of program. I think it's great. Also, um, I think it lowers the barrier to entry as a park and rec program. You know, when you think about kids that may be interested in movement, but uh, feel a little shy about a, a, dan a more formal dance studio. So I think it could be a, like a really inclusive program, which would be really positive. Cool, yeah. And so right now I'm just trying to think uh, what, so we have the basketball on Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays. So, I 
guess it would be a, I mean, a Wednesday. I'm wondering if it's Mm, just or... something that's like immediately, if it could be something right after school. I just caught wind of um, Litchfield Park and Rec has a bounce house and you pay $20 for the winter and you have access to just go and bounce in the bounce house. Uh, I think it's like three days a week. <laughs> it's just a way for kids to move in the winter. Like it's a pretty simple concept. So if we just like, think about it that way maybe it's like a flexible place for people to be able to go and there's some sort of monitor instructor that's guiding kids and their movement um dare i say play <laughs> <laughs> but just movement <laughs> was it was laura uh thinking of it as a class where there would be an instructor and that kind of thing and they would... class. she did and say what... um about being able to use one of the you know one of the instructors that runs a class for ken but then would have you know would have time to do something like this as well and would we have to pay ken's school like we do for pool time and ice time or are they going to be more flexible on that i'm sure they would have us pay yeah it's, that could get pretty pricey i don't i don't know okay i can i can flesh that out more and i don't have my notes from my meeting with her she very well could have told me that but it was um it was now long enough ago where if i don't have my notes in front of me i don't have the best not, recall of it not to sound sarcastic but i will because I am, but I think we're, uh, we're the Kent schools. We're, we're giving the Kent school a lot of money right now, just through the swim and the skating program. So perhaps we want to pump the brakes on that. Well, I yeah, think we need to find okay. out how much. Okay. I think we need to find out. Yeah. I would also Be say just from a logistical standpoint, you know, planning for it, discussing it over the next few months, definitely good. But I would say it's something you don't want to roll out till you have, definitely have someone new in place you know mm -hmm. i would i would almost say truth be told like there's probably not I, I would try not to roll out any new programs until you have the new staff in place you know maintaining mm -hmm. what we have running it solidly definitely 100 percent. but i don't know if we want to be adding anything new on and and trying to we're trying to uh you know jump those hurdles um while we're doing everything else so piecemeal I hear you, Jared. That makes sense. Okay. Well, um, that makes sense to me too. Um, we don't want to set ourselves up not to have a great um, program because we don't have the right, um, you know, oversight in place before we get a director in. So let me um, let me follow up, with Laura, about any potential cost. Um, and I will come back with with more details at the next meeting. Um, okay, so moving down the agenda as amended. Um, okay, this is a good one. After school program director. Okay, so give me one second to bring up notes I took. Okay, so um, Rebecca Thompson has been, I guess we call her the, um, you know, she's been kind of the interim after school program director. Um, but Jared feels really strongly that we should make her title official. And after meeting with her and Jared earlier this um, earlier this month, I I definitely agree that um, we need to make her um, our official director. Um, a little background. She works at uh, Kent Center School. She does um, pre-K as well as some special ed. Um, so she's been doing a great job with ASP. She's implemented a newsletter. Um, she's put together a calendar for the parents. Um, you know, she's she's kind of uh, been doing new activities based on feedback from the kids, such as, you know, cookies and gingerbread day. 
um, you know, so it's been going really well for her and, um, yeah, I think it's important to, uh, to give her the, uh, the title. Um, so if anyone has any questions before I make a motion, uh, Jared, Jared works closely with her and, and I spoke with her for about a half hour. Just a question to Lynn. Lynn, do we have to uh, wait till the new budget or is that, how's that going to work? No, but I think we probably, because it's a hire, we would need to recommend to the board of selectmen that they okay, right, right. hire her. Okay. Um, so I mean, you, you guys uh, already talked about the budget. You've got, you've got the budget worked out, right? To cover ASP. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, so, um, uh, Jared, is there anything that I didn't mention that you would add before I? No, I think, you know, the meeting the three of us had the other day, I think, gave you a really good sense of her skills, and you've you painted a great picture. She's awesome. She's honestly, and this is no knock towards anyone else, but she's really doing for ASP what I think is kind of what we've been working towards. You know, t Tom and Chris, um, or yeah, Tom, Chris did camp, sorry. But well, Tom and Chris did a, a really great job of kind of getting these programs back off the ground after, you know, I came on board and Rebecca having a little bit more experience in the education world and just being older and more professional experience is kind of building on what they did and taking it to the next level. And, you know, I just see so much positive. I see kids, you know, anytime I was there, kids super engaged but if they weren't interested always alternative activities she had a great control of the environment which at times was a struggle um if you guys remember from years past we did have some issues so like soup to nuts she's exactly what we want and i, I said it to mike um if she's i know she teaches summer school but if she were interested which she's expressed at least a mild interest in um running camp kent for the summer i think she'd be phenomenal so um she just has my wholehearted recommendation. And I think once again, um, especially given how things are going to look for the next few months, having someone so capable and qualified and, and, and someone I'm so confident in, in that position gives us, um, that's one less thing we have to worry about, you know? So I'll make a motion to, uh, promote Rebecca Thompson to after school program director, um, at a rate of $21 an hour. I get a second. Uh, thanks, Naomi. Um, any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. I will uh, email that to the Board of Selectmen as well. Um, okay, so 10C youth basketball. So we already covered a lot of this um, earlier, but I just wanted to bring up an email I got from uh, from Laura, who is one of the coaches. Um, okay. Um, so I haven't, I haven't paid as close attention to this basketball program as, um, as I would have liked, but um if if I can just ask some basic questions um, that maybe Abigail or Jared knows, or or if you tell me that we haven't flushed this out yet, um, so for the youth basketball we have three age groups: mm -hmm. kindergarten and first, second and third, fourth and sixth. Um, and pre, but I see that. Oh yeah, that blue font threw me off. Okay, so there's four. There's four age groups. Um, and then the fourth and sixth, it says days and times TBD. Is that because it's the, we haven't gotten enough signups to confirm it or it just um, hasn't been scheduled? So last year we ran that program with like six kids. It was just a clinic. So that was, um, I don't think having enough kids or not having enough kids is, is really going to make, or is really going to change it. It's really going to be a matter of having someone who can run it. I ran it last year, can't run it this year. Got it. So, okay. um, you know, getting 
getting someone who is interested in doing that um is basically what we're gonna um what we're gonna need to do so we will see over the next week i mean we still got it you know this program won't start for about 20 days so um you know we will uh we'll see you know this week if anybody volunteers but i don't know to be honest i just okay. don't know um yeah and uh i mean i don't know i don't know what the what Lara's email what you guys are talking about but i know she's expressed interest in volunteering and coaching before so i'm not sure if that's where this is going or not but uh um yeah it was just you know i i just felt like i should have known more about what she was talking about and i don't um so i just wanted to see if uh you know i could i could help with the logistics in any way um because so the all right so fourth and sixth that's dependent on getting someone to to run it because you were running it last year and you're not available anymore so pr the pre-k do we have a um do you know if we have a coach for that no not so, yet either okay so she yeah. said so, she, so Laura Mike, said, the, way, uh, the way it has been in the past is uh -huh. jared uh, offers a program it's a little loose about when the when the program actually will be run it's like it could be thursdays it could be tuesdays and he kind of keeps it up in the air because as he's getting people filling in like signing up he's also trying to find coaches and it kind of usually and jared you let me know if i'm speaking on a turn no, no, you're right on the mark yeah the truth, but um it kind of comes together on the fly so i think if we're going to run the basketball program we need to try to get coaches like I think that's the gap is we don't have coaches. Am I correct, mm -hmm. Jared? We don't coaches for any of the program, the basketball yeah, program. Um, we have some people who've expressed interest, but um, it is it is getting tougher. And generally, it's the same people coaching over and over, and you know that that wears on you pretty quickly. Um, so, I will I'll follow up with you on that, Mike. Maybe what I'll just do moving forward, Mike, is just basically kind of copy you on everything that I'm doing, so you can just basically see it all um you know and we can tag team it in that way um but see if we can um wrangle any more people the fourth and the fifth grade group is tough because you don't get a lot of kids in it so odds are generally not in your favor that you're going to have a parent who's interested in basketball and able to coach it and available to do so mm -hmm. um which is why I basically ran it. Cause anybody who knows anything about me, I'm not basketball is not my sport. Um, so that we're going to have to see, um, we're going to have to see who we can get. Okay. So she said she would, so Laura said, um, she's only gonna be able to coach the six thirty time slots. So that's that's one, you know. So we have a potential coach for the six thirty time slots in in Laura. So that's uh But does yeah, she want to coach think... outside of her kids? She just wants to coach her kids. I don't think she's available. She's coaching. She's another, at least in the email, it looked like she had another coaching gig. Yeah. Okay. Got it. <laughs> what are the time slots? So I see 5.30 and 6.30, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. 5.30 to 6.30, okay. Is it is it one session, 5.30 to 6.30? So there... it, all, it all depends on how many kids we have signed up. We then further, we break those kids down into teams. Then the number of teams will dictate how many time slots we need. So, for example, if we had four teams, we would need to play two games of two teams. So, therefore, you'd need to play at 5.30 and 6.30. Um, so, you know, that is all stuff that, you know, registration basically, you know, kind of still trickling in. So, that was all going to be stuff 
that would kind of be, you know, headed up this week. So we should, uh, you know, should in the next few days have a, a pretty clear picture of how to move forward. And the only, the only programs that will really be problematic, I presume will be um, the K one. I mean, not the K one, the, the pre K and the, um, and the oldest fourth, fourth or sixth. Yeah. But okay. you said Lara now did, did Lara only volunteered to coach within her age group, right? So I'm reading the email again as you uh, asked. I mean, I assume so. It, it, she didn't say explicitly, but yeah, I mean, that's generally how it works, right? You you want to coach your your own kids. Yeah, yeah. She just said, she just said, you know, do you know how many kids have signed up for K1? Also, I'm happy to lead the pre-K group for basketball on Mondays. I would just need it to be after 6, 15 p.m., so... I don't know if that's possible or not, but uh, okay. Yeah, that's that's I did I do remember seeing that now. Um, you know that program lasts about forty five minutes. You're not getting out till seven o'clock. Um, I got the vibe from the parents previously that that kind of pushing it for the younger mm -hmm. kids, um, which is why we started. I'd second at, that. What was that, okay. Abigail? I'd say that's that's. Kind of, that's tough for kid, yeah. the kids that age. Yeah, agreed. Which is why we went to five thirty, so that way we were done at like six ten, and we just you know everybody bounced. Um, so that might not work for us. Okay. Yeah, but um, you know, once again, um, I'm gonna be coming up to Kent, like you know, like I am now, you know, once a week, twice a week. So if that's something. I see I have a staff at my new job, whereas I don't have a staff here, which as you guys know, it's much to my chagrin. Um, but I so I don't have to work nights and weekends or anything like that that I don't want to. Um, so you know, if we can't find someone to run Start Smart, then I'll do it. The fourth and fifth, I really would prefer we find someone to do it because I'm just not I'm not really a capable coach for that age group for basketball. I just don't know enough about it. But um, you know. We'll make it. We'll make it work for sure, um, especially the pre-K program. Cool. Okay, Something great. Well, thanks for oh, good. Else. You just you you mentioned, or that was just mentioned, kind of casually as we were talking, was Mike being cc'd on all emails, and it just made me. It dawned on me that perhaps as we move into our next era of Park and Rec, the chair could have a town email address. So. If they're more looped into correspondence or even just for this in between time, they don't have to use their personal email. Um, I just wanted to point that out, Mike, because it was casual and I didn't know if that was what you were intending, but I thought I would raise maybe getting a down email address. I think that's a great idea, Abigail. I think every chair of every commission should have a town email. <laughs> Is that something, how, how then I guess from your, from where you sit and maybe Rufus from your past experience, how, how would you advise? I, I think it, we like could, that? we could ask the selectmen if that we could just have a policy. I mean, it does cost money. Um, they don't, they're not like free Gmail accounts. They actually have to pay for them. So there would be an associated cost, but it's good policy to have yeah. that. And it's, um, so I can I can bring it up to the selectmen, see if we can make that happen. But um, I think that would be really I think that would be of great benefit. Yeah, I agree. OK, um, 11, or excuse me, 10 D open skate and learn to skate. So Abigail, you, you want to make sure this didn't fall through the cracks. Yes, um, I just. I always hear how much people love it. I know that when I joined the commission, it seemed like it was a, it's, it had stagnated a bit, or you know, the skating in general. Maybe there was a little bit of open skate, and Jared just he offered so much open skate last year, and it was like a dream. <laughs> so I just I I know I haven't heard anything about it, 
I just didn't want that to not happen this winter. And I you know last year when it was happening, there were even people asking for sticks and pucks. So perhaps I'm having a, a dream here that we could pull it off, but would love to try to. So the problem, I, I definitely think, you know, we should roll a few out again. Um, the problem was last year, it was, I mean, from a program standpoint, it was a big loser financially. Um, and like you said, Abigail, we ran so many of them, which I don't know if that was to our detriment almost because it gave people too many options. But we were paying three hundred dollars, or three fifty even an hour, and it that was that's tough to recover, and we weren't recovering that, um, unfortunately. And so, um, I don't know, and nor have I put together a plan yet on maybe doing a few less Sundays, in hopes that we'll get more people out on those Sundays. Um, I didn't really leave last year with any clear picture um as to why um we didn't have as many people which although i'm sure made it better for the skaters because it wasn't jam-packed out there but um you know you are very involved in that much more so than i am abigail so if you have any thoughts you know certainly happy to hear them i think that maybe i would love to test sticks and pucks and I think there's a lot of adults that are out there with their kids, just, you know, even during learn to skate, hungry to move around and use their sticks. <laughs> so maybe it's less, we do less open skate. Well, maybe we offer the same amount of time, but we do a combination of open skate and sticks and pucks to see if there's more interest or, you know, see what we get for sticks and pucks. Jared, did you ever did you ever reach out to South Kent School? Because South Kent used I know used to donate time on Sundays. They donated time. Yes, there oh, was a wow. long history of Kent School donating time over the holidays, over Thanksgiving and Christmas, and then South Kent started the tradition of donating on Sunday. Hmm. No, that would so be amazing to to find a way of. I think that, Lynn, what you're mentioning, I think that kind of fell fell apart about five years ago. You know, or what? maybe it maybe it maybe it was longer than five years ago, but it, it had fallen apart by the time I joined the commission. You know, going back on what Abigail just said um earlier about um us looking into the financial aspect, because you know, we do spend a lot of money paying for stuff at Kent School. And um I know like, you know where Connecticut and you know it's New York but when I lived in Millbrook we would do I know like um, Millbrook school would have open skate and you'd pay like just five dollars they call it a donation to go in but um the schools never paid it you can just go up to the school like you know like even right now if you want to go I think sat I can't remember how it went but Saturdays and Sundays they have open skate and you, they call it a donation you can give a donation so a lot of us went there just to skate and hang out with friends so you know I think maybe we should start having conversations you know, open dialogue with some of the schools around to see, you know, you know, you know, as a form of giving back to the town, you know, some of the stuff and like, we're not, you know, like, obviously we have to pay for some of the stuff, but, um, you know, it's definitely something we should have a conversation about to see, you know, what, you know, they can, you know, you know, call, I don't know if they, however they'll quote it or call it, you know, community giving or, or give back or some kind of something, but, you know, um, like Lynn mentioned, if Kent, South Kent did something like that, maybe we can just move, you know, see if we can open that again and have that conversation and probably move it over on that side. When we did it years ago, when the town and Park and Rec did it years ago, there was a, a paid, like a program aid who actually monitored it. How did how did it work last year? Was there a program aid who was monitoring it? So oh, last year, Jared monitored it as the director. Yeah, I did it. I think Shane was there a few times. In years, yeah, in years past. Um, Mike, you remember when we were we mm -hmm. were monitoring I did it once, it? yeah. Just once. Is it but... like the 
the commissioners. We just had like a rotating volunteer basis of commissioners monitoring it. Yes. Was that what happened that time? Yes. Because we had the, also the, the park pass, so we had to um, either check people's passes or sell them. And then instead of a park pass, you guys are just uh -huh. charging people. Yeah, basically it's through my rec, correct? Yeah. Yeah, we um we don't have park passes anymore. I know. Well, I guess the question is, do we want to take this on? <laughs> um, because this is the time when when the skating has to happen. So um, Lenny, um, Lenny, you, um, since you know about you know doing it at um South Kent, is it possibly you can reach out? You know, if maybe I, if we decide and I, help Jared I, out of it. I don't, I don't work there anymore, but I can reach out to the the rink manager and find out if it's still a possibility. Um, and, um Lynn is also mentioning on the chat about you know um. Uh, South Kent ring, and she also said she can volunteer. Um, Jared to find out. Um, Kent resident time, and I do like the idea of the you know Kent resident time. But you guys would want to have a fee, or if we're getting free ice time, it wouldn't matter. If we're getting free ice time, we don't have to charge. You know, I think what the the model Naomi was just mentioning, where you can don't you know you could give a donation. Yeah. yeah, it would be a donation and like literally all, you know, like um us, you know, moms with the kids, we'll all go skate with the husbands and with everybody. And you know, you can it's it's a donation. They call it a donation. It's like a five dollar donation. Or if you want to donate more, it's a donation you give. So if you don't, you know, you didn't donate, it's fine. It's a donation, you know, for residents of, of Millbrook. So if we can figure out something like, you know, like Kent resident time, you know, where Kent residents can come in. And you show your ID, you know, and you go in with your family and skate. I think it's something, you know, great to do. I think we'll have more families coming out. Okay. I will uh, I'll at least reach out and find out what's possible. They do have new administration there. So it could be a totally different thing because this was quite a few years ago. So, And I'd be happy to write to the new head of school as well on behalf of the commission. Well, let me let me start and we'll see we'll see what the response is. OK, OK. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm just um, he, it's a local parent who has their yeah, kids involved exactly. in the program. So yeah, it could be a benefit. Yeah, I think, you know, um, it, it doesn't hurt if, um, but, you know, one person reaching out to, you know, if we have two, I think more hands on deck, the better it's, you know, knowing one person, two, three, four more hands on deck, I think it's better, you know, at least we get things moving, you know, one person might get no, somebody else might get yes, you know, and then we can all work together. It does, I don't think it necessarily have to be one person, you know, we, um, Lynn can also work together with Abigail and you guys can probably have a meeting with whoever it is or, or reach out and ask something, but I think it doesn't hurt to have more than one person on the ball. I agree. I'd be happy to communicate with you, Abigail, about what response, what the response is, and then you could take it from there <laughs> sure yeah 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 whatever whatever like works i um mm -hmm. i'm just i'm happy to write on behalf of the commission if it if it's of value oh we're getting somewhere tonight i like that <laughs> working together <laughs> mm -hmm. okay cool so um sounds like we have some some plans to uh to feel it out and and see what what we can offer. Um, all right, so that covers the programs and events that we had under our agenda tonight. Um, parks and facilities. Um, I had notes from Jared that. Let's see, one second. Oh, um, so Rick took delivery of the picnic table and 
it's being installed this week. Is that right, Jared? Or it was installed? The company hasn't confirmed when they're going to install it yet. Okay. I Got it. don't know if this week is going to be realistic. The holidays coming up. Yeah. You know, it's, it's tough, but um, I would assume by the beginning of uh, January. Got it. I think um, it's a one and, day, one day install. So. And the shed delivery is scheduled for Wednesday, January third, and the previous shed has been demolished. Yep. We demolished the previous shed ourselves. Um, the company already came and built the uh, pad that the shed's going to go on. And uh, January 3rd, they're going to come, drop it off, anchor it into the ground. And um, either myself or Ed will be there. And uh, it should be pretty simple. Cool. Jared, if there's a problem there January 3rd, I could probably come in. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Rufus. Thanks, Rufus. Yep. Yeah, I think they said any time, sometime before 12. So, you know, pretty vague, but I'll keep everybody posted. All right, John, anything else? On yeah, parks? I was just going to say, oh. yeah, we, uh, I took Rufus on a tour of the parks. And uh, one of the things that, uh, first of all, the uh, playing fields, uh, I would like to suggest that we uh, move uh, Rufus over to that position as well um, to fill that vacancy that'll be there. So I'm representing the town of uh, the uh, Kent School and Rufus will be uh, doing the park and rec. So anybody wanna make a motion for that? To... So uh... is this the playing field subcommittee? Or... Yes. I'm sorry, do you just mind giving a little context, John? I'm just, yeah, I'm just, what it is basically is, uh, well, uh, Jared was doing all the work. So now that he's going away, so we're just going to need another person for that position. So it would be, uh, Rufus does a lot of work. He's done a lot of work down in the Milford on that, those types of things. So it'd be perfect. And, and this committee still uh, is, I didn't. I didn't think this a committee still existed. So they, it's just to make sure that the playing fields continue to be maintained. Correct. Is that the purpose of it? Okay. Yes. So I guess we need a motion to add Rufus Duram to the playing fields committee. Subcommittee. Subcommittee. Yeah. So moved. Okay. Can I have a second? Second. Thanks, Naomi. Um, any more discussion? Yeah, Rufus, uh, you want to tell them everybody what we saw? <laughs> well, um, you know, we walked around and, and uh, there's definitely lots of projects that Jared's gotten in place, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done to the fields. Um, so, uh, you know, John and I would try to come up with a generalized uh, plan of approach to how we would continue to upgrade and, and um, the fields. Um, that would also include trying to figure out about the backstop by, behind the baseball field and uh, maybe the score scoreboard, et cetera. So there are several issues still to keep keep on the burners. <clears throat> yeah, and that kind of informs the the capital plan. Um, okay, so all those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Uh, also, Any to uh, oh, also let me just finish real quick, John. Uh, sorry. Uh, also, when we were doing our tour there, the uh, lady had her dogs in the uh, tennis court, which was kind of annoying. Yeah, shouldn't do that. I was wondering if maybe we should be able to shut it down for the winter, lock it up. I'd really prefer we don't lock it up at all, for the ever. Winter? For the winter? No, 
for the winter. I don't think you. I, it, I, did the nets come down? Do we take the nets down in the winter? We should. I mean, we haven't, it's just but. a space that like my kids can play in. People can use. Uh, and it's just like when it's locked up, we're just taking away like a whole. Well, you have a new large area playground, right? that people you can use. Yeah, you have a new playground. But the kids will. I, I'm very yeah. against locking up the tennis courts. Yes, I'm against at any time. So maybe we could. I mean, I'm not a big fan of signs either, but maybe we could put a sign about keeping dogs off them because there's plenty of space to walk dogs there too. Yeah, but to, to John's point, it does. I mean, it's not good for the the tennis court surface and costs a lot of money to resurface those. Sure, a sign that says dogs not allowed, mm -hmm. but everyone else is, is a lot better than locking it so no one could use it. I agree. I agree. Okay. Then uh, Rufus, there's a lot more stuff uh, at Emory Park, right? Oh, yeah. No, I wasn't even considering. I, I was thinking about the fields mainly, but definitely there's a, still, you know, things that we're going to have to explore at Emory Park. Um, so I think John and I were specifically targeting, trying to get a hold of um, our state reps and see what kind of assistance the state might do in terms of the water runoff coming off of 341 into the park. That That's kind of key. <clears throat> Um, and then, uh, we, ha we have several other ideas too, but I think at this hour, John, we should hold off on some of those. Yeah, that's no problem. That's no problem. I do think that we should talk at a future meeting about whether or not we want to reallocate some of the money that's in the capital plan, uh, for Emory Park. And use it for different different uses um, to like maybe just find out what it would cost to do certain things. Um, because otherwise, I feel like that we've been in a stalemate there for quite a long time. But I know it is late tonight, so I don't want to get into it. But I do think we should talk about that at a future meeting. Well, I mean, even that tour that John and Rufus took is is a lot more progress than um than we've had so i think that's really great that you guys did that and yeah if, if um you know next next meeting uh or a meeting where we can move it up into the agenda and, and kind of discuss it front of mind um it sounds like that's a good idea um okay so uh moving forward in tonight's agenda. Uh, so the hiring subcommittee update. Um, so, you know, so the subcommittee met last week. Um, it, it's comprised of Lynn, who is our chair, uh, myself, Secretary Rufus, and then Miranda Lovato and Bethany Keck. Um, the Job description is live in several publications. The um, resumes are coming in. And um, one thing I just wanted, now that I had John and Lynn, um, I know I know you had emailed about the, the posting in the Connecticut Recreation and Parks Association. And was there, was there anything more that we needed to do, John, there? Is, did you, did you want to, a revised description the post that included the salary how how, is, how did we leave that john well I, yeah i was going to suggest it but earlier in, in the in the program but anyway it doesn't make it i think just stick to what you have right now and see who you can get so it's just better that way okay and it's live right now um yep. on that it's job been live. yeah it's been live since uh, friday or it should have been okay. thursday um but that it does not have the salary in that posting okay. no Okay. You, oh, you took it out? 
No, I. Oh, I'm sorry. I no, it's still you're you're right. Lynn is still there. Yeah. Yeah. It is there. Okay. Um. Thanks for clarifying that, John. Um. Okay. And we're we're meeting again Wednesday. Um. Lynn, was there anything else you you think the commission needs? Uh, no, I, I we're getting a nice response for um, not all of the you know resumes that are coming in are applicable, but we we're going to have choices. So I, I'm feeling good about that. So I think I think we're moving right along. I think it's great. Yep, agreed. Um, okay, the uh, it is budget time. Um, not tonight, uh, but. I put the budget worksheet in the shared folder and, um, you know, Barbara's asking for our budgets in early January. So I will be, I'm hoping to schedule a special meeting, um, first week of January to, um, go over our budget for fiscal year 2025. So if, um, if everyone could kind of take a look at what's in the shared folder, um, I think that would help us for that next next meeting to discuss it. But that's all I wanted to to mention tonight. Um, and then Lynn, uh, the capital plan. Um, yes, please. Which was here we go. Um. So unfortunately, uh, the selectmen um, had they they moved a bunch of things out of the fifth year. Just as a reminder, because I did listen to your meeting on November eighth, where you talked a lot about the capital plan. Um, we have a five year capital plan, and we budget we tax people on the five years, even though there's ten years in the document that you see. The first five years are the ones that we tax people on. And it's really the fifth year, which this year is fiscal year 2029, which is the one that the focus is on each year. Um, so that, because it's the last year that that there's gonna be tax taxpayer money going into. The other six through 10 is sort of like, this is nice to know. This is what we're planning. Um, so they, <clears throat> the selectmen didn't vote on this, um, didn't take a final vote, but they moved the, the 60000 out of Emory Park. They moved the $100,000 out of Kent Commons basketball, and they moved out the 35000 vehicle into the sixth year of 2030. Those three things. And the reason I wanted to bring it up is if you guys object to that, we're gonna talk about it at our December 27th meeting. And you know, the, the commission should feel free to come and talk about it. Um, and the other thing is you can talk about it at the annual town meeting on January 18th, because this is this is your opportunity to say why these things are important. Um, because so again, um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So again, Lynn, so the items that were moved out of fiscal year 2029 were basketball, which we yeah. had a hundred thousand dollars yeah. for, and the Six, other ones again, I'm sorry, 60,000 for Emory Park, which I can't remember. Is that plate? Okay, it was pa I paving know. and drainage and trails, total oh, 60,000. And then thirty five thousand dollars for a vehicle. They left okay, in. So they, they left, left in the splash the pad. Splash pad in. But once again, the board of finance is going to look at this too, and they are going to push back because that the figure is quite high for that fifth year. So we're going to if if you the guys two hundred fifty thousand. You're saying yeah. I'm I'm saying if you guys want to fight for these items. The commission's going to have to fight for them. That's, a, that's and the date. The, the dates of those meetings again, Lynn. <laughs> There's okay. The board of selectmen meeting coming up is December twenty seventh. Mm -hmm. And I know we're gonna we're gonna talk about. I had asked for a delay on the vote because there wasn't enough information on um, 
a truck for the fire department. So, but I, it doesn't mean that you guys can't talk about these items if you if you feel strongly about it. That's my point. Well, and this is in person? So our meetings are hybrid now. Okay. Right. So we are in person in town hall, but you can join by Zoom. Okay. Um, well, I mean, the good thing as far as defending it is I feel like the, um, you know, the narrative that we provided last year year that included um you know the these items is pretty robust so unfortunately mike that uh, narrative didn't get communicated over this year so right, with saying for marty like the, for, and i being yeah. brand new we didn't get to see that narrative right yep okay so that's good to know um i'm just thinking of like for prepping mm -hmm. for that meeting um you know jared did jared and julia and whoever else worked on it, they did put a lot of time in that document, which is, uh, um, you know, available. So that's kind of where my mind went first. Um, Very good point. So you're, you're saying that the, the splash pad though, will be, will be a focus of the, the board of finance or. I don't know. I mean, they focused know, but... on it last year. Uh -huh. <laughs> You have to make the yeah. case each year, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Okay. Um, you know, well, certainly it sounds like based on Rufus and John's recent survey that, you know, the, the Emory Park items are, are, uh, are, you know, can't be ignored. Um, but, but we have to make a case for what we're going to do with Emory Park. And mm -hmm. we have to be very clear about that. So mm -hmm. just in nine days. Well, I'm just saying yeah. in general, I think the commission has to be very clear about what it wants to do with Emory. Cause there's a lot mm -hmm. of uncertainty out in the town about, you know, how much money should we put, be putting into this park that is not open for swimming. Mm -hmm. Understood. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for uh, bringing that to our attention. Was there anything else? Um... No, that was it on the Capitol. Okay. And then, so we're moving to the last item, election of members of the annual town meeting. All right. So we just need to communicate with Joyce Kearns and make sure it gets on to the agenda <laughs> and that we tell the people in their terms. So the alternates are a one-year term. How long is it? I can't remember. How long is the regular members? Three-year uh, term? Th yeah, three years sounds right. But we don't have the bylaws open, but we have 2026 as the latest. That would make sense that if they were 2023, yeah, three-year terms. Okay. All right, we will definitely uh, make sure we're on top of that for January. Excellent. All right, well, thank you, everybody. Um, time is 8.59. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see everyone uh, soon. But in the meantime, uh, happy holidays. Uh, happy New Year. All that good stuff. Good night. Good meeting tonight. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everyone. You, Jared. You too, Jared. Thank you.